Welcome to the Press Box. I'm Steve Mims along with Triple Crown winning columnist Austin Meek. We're here to talk about the Oregon men's basketball team heading into the end of the regular season Saturday, 3 o'clock at uh, Gill Coliseum. Looks like a mismatch of a civil war on paper. 14 game difference between the teams in the standings. One team in first, one in last. Austin, looking ahead, what do you what do you look for Oregon out of this one? Any any kind of a threat at all, or just what are you looking for? Well, Oregon's got everything to play for. Oregon State seemingly has very little to play for. They they're just basically playing out the string, and Oregon's got a chance to to win at least a share of of the Pac-12 title, which would be a huge deal for Oregon to win that back-to-back -back years. Looking back through Oregon's history, not very many of those, and I, I think winning it this year is maybe even a bigger accomplishment than winning it last year when you look at, at the league with Arizona at the top, potentially 16-2, and two, and UCLA. I mean, there's three Final Four caliber teams in the Pac-12 this year. I don't think that was the case last year when Oregon won it. Yeah, last year Utah was actually second. That was the only other team that even made it to the Sweet 16 with Oregon. So this year the conference looks deeper. We'll hear about oh home court. Dor Duck's going to be scared going on the road. Is that something to worry about? First off, I think the crowd's going to be about one-third Oregon. Oregon's been really selling this idea that, hey, this is your first time in about 60 years to watch the teams clinch the title in the state. And also, I think Oregon State at this point, you know, it's senior day, which Dane Altman always says, oh, that can be scary. Cheek Njai isn't exactly going to be the guy <laughs> that, uh, that gets the crowd going. I haven't played in about uh, since the ninth game of the year. So looks like a mismatch, like I say, on paper. We'll see. Oregon struggled a little bit. You know, you remember the ASU game when they were looking ahead to Arizona. Struggled a little bit there. And then a couple other games where, you know, obviously at Colorado coming off a big win over Utah. But be a pretty monumental upset if they go down here. Bigger question, looking ahead now, with, with Oregon – end of the regular season, Pac-12 tournament coming up, do you still see a number one seed in play as a possibility for them? I think it's definitely a possibility, especially with Gonzaga now having a loss on their resume. If Gonzaga were to stumble in their conference tournament, I think there is a chance that Oregon could get up to that number one seed uh, in the West if, if Oregon wins the Pac-12 tournament. Uh, if you're Oregon, I think you just want to be in the West, whether it's Gonzaga 1, Oregon 2 in the West, or Oregon 1, Gonzaga 2. Either way, I think that would be a, a great draw for Oregon versus going to the, the Midwest or the South or the East as a one seed. Yeah. You know, in what you would refer to as kind of a goofy early selection show they did about a month ago, Oregon was the number eight seed. Gonzaga was the four. It would seem like if Gonzaga losing to BYU, that takes them off the one line. I mean, if they are a number one seed with that loss, it sort of makes us wonder what in the heck they were doing that show for. Because if they were the last number one seed and then you lose that, in Oregon, by the way, since then has gone 5-0. That came out right after the UCLA game. Gone 5-0, got the Pac-12 tournament coming up. So my guess is if Oregon runs the table, they would be ahead of Gonzaga. Whether that's the one, I assume that would put them the one in the West. But if Oregon wins out and still falls behind Gonzaga, it would, it would kind of call into question the, the selection committee from a couple weeks ago. Lastly, we'll move on to the women. Ryan Thorburn's up in Seattle right now with the women who are going to the Pac-12 tournament. They had up there coming off a tough home weekend, getting swept by the Bay Area schools. Their deal is the NC2A tournament. What do you see they have to do to get there? You know, I was a little surprised, but they're still in the projections even after losing three straight to end the regular season. You know, they finished 8-10 and 10 in the Pac-12. Oregon's got Arizona in the first round. I think they absolutely have to beat Arizona. First round loss in the Pac-12 tournament, four straight losses to end, to end the season. That would, that would put them in a really tough position. But I think if they get that, that win against Arizona, they'll have a chance to put themselves in, no doubt, if they can pull an upset of Washington. But I think absolutely they have to win that first round game. Yeah, a little tougher that second round when you realize the men, at least at a neutral site, the women, they're playing at Seattle, so yeah. it would be Washington, Kelsey Plum, the player of the Kelsey year, fans and, the <laughs> and you're going to have an overwhelming road crowd. So, like you say, you better get the Arizona one. I hope that's enough. Good. But if they could somehow or another get the Washington one, that would probably seal them in. All right, well, hey, we appreciate you tuning in. We'll uh, check back in with you following Civil War and look ahead next week to the Pac-12 tournament. Thanks for watching.